A city so grand, it doesn't just live up to its reputation, it exceeds expectations. Dubai is an amazing destination that will continue to surprise you. I am so excited to share the next few videos with you as we discover Dubai together. Before we jump in, let's get a little bit more familiar with Dubai, shall we? Located in the Middle East, Dubai is one of seven emirates that make up the UAE. Dubai is the second largest emirate after its capital, Abu Dhabi. Dubai is also a popular stopover destination, particularly for my Australian viewers who are normally on their way to Europe. In 2019, 16.7 million tourists visited Dubai. <laughs> That's a lot. To give you a comparison, in 2019, 4.1 million people visited Sydney. Obviously, since then, the pandemic has had a lot of impact on tourism, but it seems to be picking itself back up as of a lot of people in Dubai when I was there. As for entry requirements, at the time of filming, a negative PCR test is required. And visa-wise, if you're a passport holder from one of these countries listed here, no advanced visa arrangements are required once you're stamped. You're in. After you arrive to Dubai International Airport, go through customs and collect your bags, you'll be looking for a way to get to the city as quickly as possible. You can choose between the metro or a taxi. I took a taxi, and depending on where you're staying and traffic, a taxi ride can be about 20 to 40 minutes to your hotel. As for which hotel to stay, more on that later. After spending two weeks in Dubai, I quickly learned that I barely had the chance to scratch the surface of what this amazing city had to offer. There is so much to do here that it would be impossible to see everything. And being presented with so many choices, it can definitely be overwhelming to research. So I'm gonna give you my guide on how to eat, stay, and play in Dubai. It's hard to believe when confronted with the sheer size of this mega city that it was only built 60 years ago. Once a fishing port, Dubai has developed into a modern day metropolis. The first thing I noticed when I arrived was that I was constantly looking up. Everything was so big and grand. Dubai's goal seems to want to consistently have the biggest and best of everything and always seems to hold a world record. One of them being the world's tallest building, the iconic Burj Khalifa. Open since 2010, this 828 meter building only took six years to build. That's the thing about Dubai. They're always building and they build quickly. Next on the list is the Dubai Fountain, which also happens to be the world's largest choreographed fountain show. Made by the same company, company who built Las Vegas famous Bellagio Fountain, Catching the Fountain Show is a great introduction for your first day in Dubai. Highly, highly recommend it. And an insider tip for the best place to watch both the Fountain Show and the Light Show on the Burj Khalifa at night is from Time Out Market Dubai, which now leads us onto the next important topic of food. My first day in Dubai and I was like, you know what, where am I going to get lunch today? This is going to be a pretty, pretty, you know, important step into eating in Dubai. It's like kind of a melting pot of lots of different cultures. So I was like, where am I gonna go? And you know what, I know exactly where I'm gonna go. Time Out Market Dubai. So for those of you who use Time Out, the website, Foodies Guide to Every City, and they have a market here of like a bunch of food stalls. I went to Matsi's and then I got a samosas chat. So the samosa chat was amazing. It had like a vegetarian samosa with like curry on the bottom. And then it also had some mango chutney, which kind of gave it like a sweet and tangy taste to it. The pomegranate seeds and a chat dressing on top. And I wish you could could have smelled it because it smelled incredible. It's like a bomb, flavor bomb right in your face. And then also with the spices, it's kind of almost like a slow burn. That was a solid, good effort for a first meal. I'm pretty excited. I was impressed and I'm so excited to eat my way through Dubai because the city is like a foodie mecca and I'm ready to try everything. Another must do is the Dubai Mall, formerly the world's largest mall. I think you guys are starting to get the picture now. You are bound to get completely lost in this thing, so make sure to download the app to help you navigate your way around. An experience not to be missed is the high tea of atmosphere, located on level 122 in the Burj Khalifa. If your wallet allows, splurge for a window seat and take in the view. Trust me, you can always figure out the money part later. Next, can we talk about the food? Everything was fantastic. The market fish was turbo. I was literally in heaven. This was by far the best high tea I've ever experienced. Even if you're not into high tea, trust me, this experience is so worth it. You won't be disappointed. Make your reservation. You can thank me later. It's lobster. I'm having that lobster with high tea.
we can't talk about Dubai without talking about the party scene. Like Vegas, Dubai has some seriously sexy beach clubs and nightlife. My favorite day clubs were Drift and Mickey Beach. Unfortunately, on this trip, we didn't make it out to any nightclubs, so maybe next time. But a fabulous spot for drinks is Tomoka. This bar restaurant is right on the beach and is a total vibe. And my tip is to get the blowout cocktail here. Alright, so today is a big day for me because I am finally giving shawarma. So this is the thing that you're supposed to eat here when you come to Dubai and I'm at El Baru, which is supposed to be the place to get it and it looks bomb, skis, I got a chicken shawarma and I am so excited to try it. Try it. Mm -hmm. So inside this baby we have chicken shawarma, we have garlic sauce and french fries and hot cold. Having food like this is the reason why I travel. It makes me so happy and I always remember a place by where I ate and what I ate and how it made me feel while I was eating it. I definitely need to find some treat each shawarma while I'm here but this place is legit. Definitely finger in Dubai. Check this place out. It's super cute and this is Kadak Chai, which is supposed to be the number one street eat or street drink to try when you come to Dubai. So this is a chai tea and it has condensed milk in it. So let's try it out. Yeah, you can taste the condensed milk right away, which gives that really nice, sweet, creamy flavor. And then also the chai is a beautiful chai tea. And honestly, this is what the locals drink every day. And um, it's just a great way to experience a different culture by drinking the tea that they drink. If you're looking for a luxurious getaway just minutes away from downtown, look no further than Park Hyatt Dubai. This amazing 243 room property has Mediterranean and Moorish influences and the architecture is just beautiful. Everything is whitewashed with bougainvillea accents and wooden tones. And this hotel is a foodie's paradise with so many options of eateries to choose from. The brunch was one of the most decadent brunches I've ever experienced in my life. We also had a chance to visit the Indian restaurant here, Cinnamon Bazaar, which was incredible and definitely had a lot of unique touches. There is also a French restaurant and then the buffet here and then the cafes, everything is so good. You will definitely be spoiled for choice. So whether you're looking for a romantic getaway or a girls weekend away, or just a reason to pamper yourself, you'll definitely want to consider Park Hyatt Dubai. We booked one of their Skyline View rooms, which had a front facing view of the creek. And I just wanted to say a warm thank you to Park Hyatt Dubai for looking after us during our stay. Now, let's talk about their brunch. Listen up, you'll want to come very hungry for this one because this gourmet buffet has everything us foodies could ever wish for. From unlimited lobster, oysters, caviar, risotto with shaved truffles, fragua, yes I repeat, fragua, and of course champagne. I was literally in heaven. So I'm here at Twiggy, which is the beach club here at Park Hyatt, and it is beautiful. It has an infinity pool looking over the creek, and the fields here are like Mykonos, Saint-Tropez vibes, that music is soft house. It's really, really chill, super upscale, chic, classy, totally my type of place, and definitely a place to check out if you're coming to Dubai. So we're currently at Noef Bay, which is a sunset bar here at the Park Hyatt. I have a Capri in hand. Mm. Happy Sophie, and then we're gonna quickly go home and get, or sorry, go back to the room and get ready. And then we have dinner reservations at Cinnamon Bazaar tonight, which is supposed to be the Indian restaurant here. It's supposed to be really, really good, and I'm really excited. So I'll check back with you guys in a bit. So now we're at Cinnamon Bazaar, and if you're familiar with London's restaurant scene, you'd have heard of the Cinnamon Club by Vivek Singh. I was really excited to try his new outpost. The food here is modern Indian, and to start, we had the aru puri, stuffed with truffle potatoes and topped with caviar. Next, we had the king scalp ceviche with pressed persimmon and more caviar, followed by a meal fit for an Indian banquet, including chicken tikka, a cocada fish curry, steamed basmati rice, and of course, some garlic naan. Everything was so good, but my ultimate fave was the pan kulfi on a stick. This is my first time having this traditional Indian dessert, and now I'm officially a pan kulfi fan. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and discovering Dubai with me. If you got something out of it, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I have a whole Dubai series coming to you soon. 
If you've been to Dubai or have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below so we can create a community thread. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for a sneaky peek of episode two. In the next episode, we step back in time to explore another side of Dubai. We visit the souks, ride a traditional opera boat, and I go on a solo adventure to the desert.